One of the most important periods of geologic time to our development as a species was the Carboniferous. This period of time is known for a great many things, but principal among them was the immense coal deposits produced through the decay of continent-spanning forests. The high oxygen levels, high sea level, and high humidity allowed for land invertebrates to colonize. Among them were one of life's first experiments with flight, the griffin flies. Invertifest is a periodic event on Twitter founded and run by scientific illustrator Franz Anthony, microbial biologist Dr. Maureen Berg, and naturalist Kelly Brenner to explore and discover the invertebrates where we live. The goal is to reveal the invertebrates we often overlook that live alongside us and highlight their lives. What may be an everyday occurrence to you may be new to someone half the world away. Since I've moved back into an apartment for university and hold myself away from society to, you know, not die, I've only noticed a few invertebrates from the infrequent trips to the grocery store. One invert I constantly hear around campus are the infuriatingly loud chorus of cicadas. These poor bugs are screaming for sex before they peter out and die. Another common insect around these parts are katydids, specifically the broad-winged katydid. Freshman year, I put some in a tank I had until they died. The third common insect around campus, though much rarer than the other two, is the praying mantis. Since I never had the wherewithal to specifically identify species, they could be Asian or European mantises. I also kept one in a terrarium. She thrived, but had a hard time with the mesh cover. She eventually laid an egg case and then died shortly after. I tried to keep the egg case alive so it could hatch in spring, but it never did. Since Invertifest fell at an odd time this year, I'm not super prepared for it. Therefore, there's a distinct possibility this video has been released outside of the actual Invertifest dates of August 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. I'll do my best though. I figured what better time to use an old script I've had laying around for years about a giant dragonfly-like insect from the past than now. So, without further ado, this Invertifest, let's take a deep dive gander at the griffin flies. The Carboniferous period is a span of geologic time lasting 60 million years, from the end of the Devonian period at around 358 million years, to the start of the Permian around 298 million years. Giant land arthropods were common, but so were normal sized ones. Many characterize this period as solely populated by giant bugs and amphibians, but many other things lived at this time as well. Giant millipedes like Arthropleura mowed through vegetation and rotting wood on the forest floor, among many other species of large and small millipedes. The first cockroaches churned up vegetation as well. Among them were the griffin flies, a group of flying insects technically related to dragonflies and damselflies, but very far removed. Griffin flies are to dragonflies, as ancient primates like Pliopithecus are to us. The griffin fly most are familiar with is Meganeura, thanks to its more complete but still fragmentary fossil record, and its inclusion in a bunch of paleomedia, my favorite being prehistoric bark. Griffin fly is the common name of the group Meganisoptera. Many of the Meganisopterans were similar in size to the range of modern dragonflies, and only a few are monstrously large. Meganeuropsis is a larger taxa known from comparatively fewer remains. Curator of fossil insects at Harvard University, Dr. Frank Carpenter was the first to uncover the remains of a wing section, which would prove to be the largest wing of any insect to ever live. The first specimen was pulled from limestone deposits of the Elmo Formation of Elmo, Kansas in 1937. It was described in 1939 as Meganeuropsis permiana, this specimen was only a section of wing, but what a wing. It measures 12 inches, 30 centimeters long. When reconstructed to its full size, the wing may have reached 13 inches, 
33 centimeters, making the full wingspan 28 inches, 31 centimeters. That's the size of a hawk. Dr. Carpenter and a colleague, in just 10 weeks in the summer of 1940, collected more than 5,000 fossil insects in Noble County, Oklahoma. Among the limestone slabs they procured were more fossils of Meganeuropsis. They named the more complete, new wing specimens Meganeuropsis americana. This one was a little smaller than the first, with an 11 inch, 27 centimeter long fossil, with a restored length of 12 inches, 30 centimeters, and a total wingspan of 27 inches, 68 centimeters. The Americana species is considered by many researchers to be a synonym of the Permiana species, making it just one species from two different places and slightly different times. Though I cannot find any reference to body fossils of Meganeuropsis, it is possible they exist. However, even without them, a general shape of the animal's body can be constructed thanks to better fossils from close relatives. The wings of these bugs must have been better at fossilizing, since body fossils are super rare. As rare as they are, they do still exist. This French specimen of Meganeura is a particularly good example. Combining what is known of the critter creates an image of a well-equipped aerial predator. It had serrated toothed mandibles, which would have allowed it to keep hold of and render the flesh of many animals we wouldn't normally associate with prey for such an insect. Amphibians, fish, and of course other giant insects. They came equipped with long spiny legs to pluck unsuspecting critters on the wing. Their heads were capped by large compound eyes, which saw the world in crisp detail. At the end of the abdomen were a set of globular spines, probably used for courtship, as in modern dragonflies. Speaking of courtship, dragonflies go through a two-stage life cycle. Their babies are called nymphs, as they are a completely separate animal to their adult forms and spend their time as completely aquatic, water-breathing predators, with a pair of mantis-like legs used to grab and spear prey, which can be as large as newts, salamanders, and fish. Dragonfly babies are just the worst. Now, despite the unrelatedness of the griffinflies and dragonflies, the griffinflies also had a water-dwelling nymph stage. This is proven with a fossil nymph presumably from Meganeura. Now, imagine this thing, but like five times bigger. Nearly a foot of dangerous, spring-loaded mouth parts and raptorial claws. Thanks, I hate it. These air predators lived during the early Permian. Yeah, they weren't around in the Carboniferous period. This offers a conundrum. How did insects grow to the sizes we see in the Carboniferous? The usual answer is a large amount of oxygen, and this is true. The size to which insects grow is capped by the amount of oxygen in the air they breathe. The bigger the insect, the more oxygen is needed to keep it alive and to provide the body with what it needs to grow. Therefore, the presence of larger terrestrial insects than are around today during the Carboniferous, combined with the overabundance of forests, suggests the oxygen level was higher as well. A counter to this idea is that some giant insects are also found in Permian-aged rocks, after the Carboniferous age of oxygen. The Permian had much lower levels of oxygen than the Carboniferous, and closer to what it is today. Evidently, either they survived despite this for a few million years into the Permian, or oxygen levels remained a bit higher than today, into the first part of the Permian period. The eventual lowering of oxygen levels worldwide must have had an effect on the size insects could reach, and those species which were already big couldn't adapt and died out. Subscribe to consume some delicious contento, gore the like button, scratch out a comment, and jostle the notification bell just so you're in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. A very special thanks to my patrons, Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Ed Peretz, Steve Bradshaw, and Dana Manchester. If you'd like to support my channel and receive some extra content, pledge to my patron at any tier you want.